You okay? Yeah. Are they gonna go back in the house? No. Oscar Jackson! <laughs> Okay, so we're gonna concentrate on this one here. There's more, he's more scared and more agitated. The other one is just very happy go lucky right now, so I don't have to worry about him. This one is just very unsure of himself. So we're gonna switch to a slip lead first. It just gives a little bit more control to communicate. With him. Come. Hey, hey. Hey, leave it. How old is this one again? They're both eight. Both eight, okay. Sit. Sit. Okay. So we're working on two completely different things. This one is just like self-control. He's really excitable. Um, and this one, he is insecure and he's, he gets really overwhelmed and, and panics. So two completely different dogs, you know? So we're going to focus on on their particular needs. So I have the two dogs. I have Oscar and Jackson that are both eight years old. Um, Oscar, I cannot take to the vet to get his nails trimmed. He has to be heavily sedated. And even when he's sedated, the vet can't trim his nails. So we're refused because he's got so much anxiety. He constantly claws at me, doesn't want to leave my side. Um, they bark at everything, any kind of a noise, they're always barking. And sometimes they'll get into a big fight. Um, sometimes they have to go to the vet because of their wounds, um, just because they're, they're so much in competition. And it's really hard and it gets very scary because you don't know when the fight's going to happen. So we decided to get two puppies, thinking that the older two dogs would train the puppies with their awesome habits. but. It didn't end up like that. So this one became more of, we called it an alpha dog, not realizing how much anxiety that he had. And then we had a pack of dogs and it was just unmanageable at that time. And then the um, two older dogs crossed over the rainbow bridge and then we're left with these two dogs. We had no um, training experience. We couldn't train them because they were so overwhelming. So, we just kind of learn to live their life and just a adjust according to them. So if someone came over, you know, we had to put them in a room or, you know, we didn't have people over. We can't do Halloween because the dogs are too, um, too much to handle. So we can't hand out um, treats. So we just kind of adjusted our lives according to them. And that's why we really wanted to do the training is because we're getting ready to move and we want to be able to take the dogs on a walk to get out and do stuff in the community. But I just, we can't walk them. They're too, they're too powerful. They're too, um, too ambi ambitious for them. So we've, we've just kind of avoided it all. But, you know, being able to have the freedom of having people come over and not have, you know, the first 30 minutes of just people just scared to death of them because they're such big dogs and being able to walk them will change our lives tremendously. Uh, they both are dealing with the same thing where they're agitated and confused and anxious because they don't know what to do with themselves. He doesn't know how to become more comfortable and follow directions and this one doesn't know how to contain his excitement. He doesn't know how to contain his excitement and then they redirect at each other. That's why it creates more jealousy and fights between them too. Leave it. So first I'm gonna get this guy away from there. Come. Come, hey, leave it, leave it. So what I'm doing is like some corrections I read on the other one. Those types of corrections are just something that tells the dog like, hey, stop what you're doing. So there's a touch, the leash pressure. Um, as I'm trying to concentrate on this one, which is basically getting him to 
like get out of this area, move around, and just realize that he can move around. I know it's a little bit like rough at first, but you can't convince these dogs that they don't have to be afraid. You kind of have to show them. That's why I'm, you know, I'm not gonna waste my time trying to get him a treat and get him to come to me because he's not gonna care for that. He's gonna be too scared. Um, and then at the same time, I'm trying to coordinate myself so that I'm redirecting the other one. Come. Come. Leave it. Come. Yes, good, that was good. So that was the first time he's him stepping into this area here. Come. Come. Yes. Good boy. Leave it. Come. Good. And then, you know, it's, we're gonna focus on both because that's the exact, when he gets more agitated, this one gets more scared. When this one gets scared, that one gets more excitable because if they are, they, it's both intense energy coming from them and they're feeding off of each other. Even though they react differently, they're still getting more intense with, you know, with their behaviors. Yes. Come on. Good boy. Good boy. I'm going to give him like a few seconds break here to compress and we'll do it again. He just needs to understand what he's doing. This all is when he's feeling leash pressure that he's responding to it instead of panicking and trying to get away from it because then you're gonna be able to utilize the leash to give him directions. So when people come over, you're gonna have the leash on, I'll show you what to do to let him know you are in control of the situation. When you take him for a walk, you're gonna use the leash to tell him to walk with you instead of pulling, you know? But if he doesn't respect the leash because he's too scared, then you can never use the leash to give him directions. You're gonna hold on to this guy, and I'll take the other one. Okay. So with this guy, we have to focus on his manner. So we're gonna focus on the jumping and the barking and the, you know, excitement like moving around so jumping you're gonna grab the leash right here Psh, no every single time so you're gonna use, use the leash to correct for the jumping which is nope just like this you're gonna you pull or you tighten it and then he responds you release so i'm doing something that is exciting but he doesn't jump you go there and you reward him so he gets attention when he doesn't jump yes good boy nope so just all you have to do is this firm no and your energy has to be directed towards him. Watch how he's gonna learn not to jump really quickly. Good boy. Yes, good boy. What a good boy. Yes. Okay, then he thinks about it, he doesn't jump, he gets reordered. Yes, what a good boy. No. Every time he forgets to do the same thing. See how he was a little bit hesitant there? No. And also the touch that I'm doing. If you notice, that just kinda helps reinforce it more. If he keeps persisting with the behavior, sometimes just this here is not gonna be enough. So. If you feel like he's more excitable about someone coming over or something and he still jumps, if you do this touch right here, as you lift up, the touch. That, it, it serves as a, a, a big, of a, a big of, a, of a correction for him. Okay. okay, come. Yes, sit. No. Sit. Good boy. Okay, come. Yes, good. Good job. Psh. Sit. Yes. So then you're able to put him in a calm state of mind and then he's gonna be able to follow directions. It's gonna be the same thing for both dogs. He's paying attention to me, he gets attention, but if he jumps, that's correction. If he's like barking, running around, that's corrections. Come. Sit. Yes. Yeah. Good boy. Come. Come. Good. Uh-uh. No. And sometimes, yes, good boy. Good job, good job, good boy, yes, come, uh, uh, no, if, if you go down, you do the same thing, you hold on to the leash, so I'm, I'm down, but he still cannot jump all over me, come on, come boy, come here boy, come here, come here, good boy, no, so you want to show him that he can get affection, he can be close to you, but not jump, so in the beginning, you see that he's a little bit confused, so he's like, he, he stopped jumping, but then he's a little bit hesitant of approaching me, because he doesn't know if he can trust me, what I'm trying to do is use positive reinforcement, invite him in, encourage him to come close to me and get affection, but when he jumps, it goes back to a correction. So after you do this, even for a few days, the, the dog understands, oh, I'm only getting correct. I'm getting this negative response from the handler because I'm jumping. It's only because of that particular behavior. Because when I do this here, it's a negative response from me. You know, but when he comes close to me and he's affectionate, but he's not jumping like this, then he's getting affection. Then he's getting a positive response from me. Good boy. And they learn very quickly. You know, they understand exactly they what. Tell time. Every 12, 4, and 8 o'clock, he knows it's treat time. Really? <laughs> 
Good boy. Come. So here's the uh, prone collar that I was telling you about. And I'm gonna show you how to use it. First thing, we always start in the house with them because obviously right now they don't know how to respect the leash. They're afraid of the leash, they pull on the leash, they don't know how to follow directions. The way that the prone collar works is designed to get the dog's attention. So basically with very little sensation of the collar, the dog responds to that and then, especially most dogs, they know the basics. You know, so like they know the basics, but they don't always listen to it because they, you're not getting their attention. They're anxious, they're excitable, they're distracted. So you put the prone collar, it brings that focus back to you and you're able to give them clear directions and then they're able to follow the commands that they already know. And you can also teach them new ones because you're able to guide them into position, into different behaviors that you want them to do. But of course it has to be introduced properly and used properly on the dogs. The first step is just putting it over the dog's head for this particular brand, that's how it works. Uh, it's gonna sit here, the leash is not attached to the collar yet. I mean, until the dog is comfortable with it, you don't wanna just apply full pre pressure and get the dog's gonna get scared of it because it's something new. So we gradually get the dog comfortable wearing the collar. So first step is just the collar being there, no leash, nothing. We adjust the size, we want it snugly close behind the dog's ears. That's just where it's going to make the collar the most effective. I will grab my leash, uh, my hand actually first and do a little bit of pressure. Because if he panics right now, some dogs they get scared of it and they panic, I just like go and hold on here and I start over again. Most dogs don't, as you can tell, he doesn't even care that it's there. So what I would do next is actually put a, not a different leash, I'll put a, a second leash on him. And the reason why we do that is because if, again, if he gets confused and unsure of the collar, I can always let go of the pressure and still have him on this one here that he's already comfortable with. Then I'll put a second leash on here. And this is where the training part actually comes in. Now I have to teach the dog to respond to the minimum amount of pressure. So instead of you just putting the collar and going for a walk, you teach the dog, if he responds to this right here, come, very little pressure. See how he's hesitant right now? Come. And you can use your body language and verbal command to try to encourage the dog in, but he responds, the tension goes away. So I stop tugging on it. You don't want to hold to the dog like this, ever. Because what we're doing is we're teaching the dog if he, if he gives in to the pressure, the tension goes away. And so you train the dog to, rely, to need, basically he's going to need the minimal amount of pressure. If you're constantly starting right away with full pressure, always yanking the dog, always holding with tension, he's going to need more and more and more and more, and the collar is no longer as effective. So right now, without the distractions, without being out on the streets, we go here in the house and we focus on this. Come, yes. He responds, we let go. Then we switch directions. We do a lot of switching directions around. If he falls before I even apply pressure, even better. That shows he's, he's very attentive and focused on me and I don't need to apply any pressure. Come. Now are you putting pressure on or is it when he goes too far that pressure stops? So basically whenever I switch directions, I go first. If he follows like this, I don't have to do anything. If he doesn't follow, I'm gonna do a little bit of pressure. Say I apply pressure to the side and he moved immediately. This is like nothing. It's two fingers, it's literally this and I move and he follows. If he follows, I let go of the tension. What I'm, what I'm teaching him right now is that if he stays within my area and he follows me when I move around, there's no tension on the leash. You're no longer holding the dog like this all the time. Okay. You know, you're walking, when you stop, he stops. So that little, almost like, I, I basically just pause the leash right there. I, I firm the leash and he knows, oh, I'm supposed to stop. Yeah, yeah it was like, because it's, it gets their attention. So now I'm gonna go back towards the door now, most dogs, because he knows he has something that gets his attention, he's more attentive to me. Now, the way that this works in the long run is that you're gonna be consistent with this. So every step that he takes is because of you. You are leading the way all the time. So when you do this consistently, you're basically conditioning the dog to always follow directions from you. Right now, he's conditioned to paying attention to people that come over, the things outside, pulling, he doesn't know better. But if I always, from today on, every time I move and he moves, it's like this. I stop, he stops. I go this way, he comes this way. I stop again, he stops. I turn this way, he comes this way. Stop. You know, so it's always like this. I go forward, I stop, I turn to the side, I turn to the right. He's gonna, all he knows is that. And he makes the dog conditioned to following directions from you, paying attention to you, looking at you for guidance. Whenever they're unsure, they look at you because they know a dog comes over there, you can also do this here. Leave it and pull the dog towards you. A person is coming, they get excited, you'll do a little bit of leash pressure, 
leave it. And immediately he responds. So now, not only he's learning to follow directions and naturally just be paying attention to you, you're also going to reinforce all his verbal commands. Or even teach new ones. For example, if he doesn't know heel to walk right next to you, I can just tell him, heel, stop. Heel, stop. Because I know I can reinforce it. So I, I'm able to introduce verbal commands that I can reinforce so the dog associates the two things. You know, what the verbal command means with the behavior. Uh, because if you're just telling him heel and he's trying to sniff everything else, he's not actually understanding what you're asking him. And there's different methods that he can use, but a lot of times it's not guaranteed that the dog is going to listen. And the method could be like using positive reinforcement, like a treat or something. But a lot of times the dog would just ignore the treat and focus on something else, you know. And with this here, you don't need anything else. You just have the right tool that communicates with your dog all the time. Come. He's already doing very, very good. Let's see if he's going to listen to some other verbal commands. Psh, sit. Yes. So he's going to be more attentive to those things as well because he already knows it, but now he knows I'm able to get his attention so he doesn't ignore it. When we get here, we're going to open the door, but we don't let the dog rush out. So we're going to open it. See how he's trying to rush out? Yeah. You're going to pull back on the leash a little bit. And you wait until he settles down. That means he's no longer leaning against the leash and jumping at the door, pulling loose leash. Okay. Then we go and open, get a little closer and make sure that he's actually still holding himself there. Then when we open the door, we don't want him rushing out. So just take your time here every day when you go practicing this. We only go out when he's calmer and not rushing you. Good, looking for direction, waiting a little bit. He's still, you know, anxious, but this, take, this is where the training actually takes time and you're gonna practice this every day. It's gonna keep getting better every time you go out. Okay, so we're gonna now step out here. But even though we step out of the door, we don't go for the walk yet. We hang out here by the door. Because you can tell he's very much in a rush and we don't want that. We want, the walk is always gonna be exciting, but we don't want it to be like that exciting that he loses control of himself. Okay, so this is really good. Loose leash. So you have to always make sure you're not holding him like this. You have to make sure he's not pacing around. He's just hanging out. Then you lead the way. Then you, whenever you're ready, gonna tell him, okay, let's go. So what we're gonna do is, instead of, instead of focusing on getting him like to walk right next to me, we're going to focus on getting him to follow directions from me. Okay. That's the first step. Okay. Which means I'm not walking in a straight line and forcing him to be right there next to me. Instead, I'm actually switching directions a lot. So I go like this, come, come, yes, good boy. And every time he's close to me, that's when you reward him. This is where you make it the most comfortable place for him. That's the number one thing. So meaning I walk back, come, come, yes. And if he hangs out here, the first thing is no tension on the leash. Okay. You just hang out. Uh, if it's too far ahead like this, you go back again. Come. Yes. Good. Good boy. So right there, behind me, next to me, even better. Loose leash. This is where it's relaxation. He pulls again, you go over. He goes back to being there. Relaxation, calm. You can reward a little bit, a little petting. Don't have to do too much. You don't want to get him excitable. Just make him walk. Make him pay attention to you. Come towards me a little bit. There's a car coming. And then stop there. Good. And then go this way. And make sure that uh, you're watching your hand pressure. So, okay, perfect. Come back this way. And also that you're not giving into where he is going. Like, don't give into his direction, you know. Okay. Uh, he's, he's trying to go that way too fast. Some people, they tend to follow the dog. Make sure you switch directions and make him follow you. So whenever he's getting too excited about going one direction, go a different direction. For example, right now, maybe cross the street. I'm in a habit of wanting to pull him to get him to go. I know. So, so then I don't do that, right? I no, just, you just, I just walk. You just concentrate on where you're going to walk. You give a gentle little tug on the leash to get his attention and use your body language and verbal commands to call him and, and go ahead. Can Here, this way. Leave? Come this way. Perfect. See how he, he wanted to go that way and you're making him come away from the distraction. You don't, you don't want him sniffing everything and getting okay. lost with those distractions. Like making sure that he's not rushing to you and when he gets here, come. Yes, that was excellent. Nice. Like when he learns he can just walk away from you and he's safe. Because you can tell it's uncomfortable for him. He doesn't feel safe yet. And this you solve with a lot of repetition. You know, maybe if you have anyone else in the household that he doesn't want to go with, you can practice this. It's okay, good boy. 
Once one more time from here, very close to you. Nice. Ready? Let's go. Let's go. Yes. Good nice. boy. Oh. Come on. Yeah. I mean, he's a little unsure. You know, he doesn't want to, but it's good that he's just yes. following directions. So, stop that for a second. Nice. Go ahead and turn, uh, switch directions. All right, how do you feel now? A lot more comfortable, at ease, that I can get out and walk them now. Very comfortable with that. Thank you. The training was life changing. Um, my dogs went from having no training whatsoever and being very obnoxious and rambunctious to being able to control them on a walk. Um, being able to just control simple commands. Um, I highly recommend the training, well worth it. And like I said, it's absolutely life changing. Thank you for everything that you do.